Hi, I'm V from the A-Team and welcome to 4 Minute Film School. Today we are talking about lighting continuity. Let's go! You probably understand continuity in terms of production design, like making sure the props are the same on both sides of a conversation. Lighting continuity works a little bit differently. You can change your lighting setups between your wides and your close-ups, as long as the direction, the color, and the quality of the light stays consistent. Let's go over to set to check that out. For our wide shot, our master shot, the first thing I like to do is place the camera and get my composition ready. That way I know exactly where I'm gonna place the lights and what lights I need to place. In this case, I wanted to take advantage of these beautiful diner chairs as a dirty element in the foreground, as well as the big bright neon sign in the background. I wanted to show some of the chair and some of the neon sign. Our main key light is inevitable. It's these windows. They are giant in the frame. You can't really do anything about them besides close them up, but since this is a daylight scene, we want them wide open. However, because only these four windows are playing in our scene, the rest we can control. So we can close them up, but for that, it actually didn't provide enough control for me. So I took a big piece of duvetine and I stretched it out just exactly to the edge of the camera. That way, everything on this side, all of that light that is bouncing off of every surface is not playing in our scene. I also put up a four by floppy on this side of the camera just for a little bit of extra control and negative fill. Now to fill in the faces a little bit more, we just put a 300D2 light without any sort of modifiers, just the standard reflector that comes on it and aimed it directly at the ceiling because I wanted to have a soft um, kind of toppy fill to fill out a little bit more of the ambiance of the scene and complement the windows so that the contrast ratio between the light side of the face, the far side key, and the dark side of the face is not as dramatic because again, this is supposed to be a more bright scene. One thing you can do is pop just a little accent light on a foreground element just so that it doesn't completely recede into shadow and adds a little bit more pretending that there's more light coming from this side. So for that, I added an MC and I actually set it to red. It is an RGB light and the red light really did complement the other touches of production design throughout the room, like the red car in the back and the red seats. A good trick is to take a small light, it could be a panel, it could be a small directional light, and ping it directly at the lens. So in this case, we have an Aperture MX light and we rigged it directly on top of the lens, pinging straight into it. And that created a little bit more of a diffusion and a little bit of a softer glow, giving this scene less of a digital look and more of a cinematic, old timey kind of look. But just be aware that for continuity, now that we've created this moodier environment, we're gonna have to retain this top ping light no matter what we do on either sides of the close-ups. Next, we're gonna punch into Chetco's close-up over here instead of Giselle's because we are mainly just set up for it, right? So we're just gonna sweeten Chetco's close-up. We sort of lucked out right now because we don't have any directional actual light coming from the windows. It is all non-directional, it's all diffused, but if you are location scouting for something, if you're gonna have a long conversation between two people, think about where you're gonna place that wide. It is super important because you go from the wide to the close-up on the same side. So this is why it's super helpful to know what order you're gonna be shooting the close-ups in because that's also gonna determine what side you're shooting your wide from as well. When you're doing a wide shot, it's kind of difficult to set up lighting, honestly, because you have to make sure that the stands themselves aren't in the shot. So whether you are clamping lights up top or doing like we did, which was bounce a light off the ceiling, you have to find creative ways to have that cinematic touch. Now, when you come in for the close-ups, you can be a little bit more specific about your lighting and where you're placing it and how you're placing it because you could have literal stands closer to your actors. So in this case, the fill light, instead of bouncing it up and having it go everywhere, we just are now directionally pointing it from the top of the frame 
into our actor. With this 300D, we put a light dome two on it with the honeycomb. And what that crate is gonna do is it is going to make that light directional and let it not spill onto the background and let it go straight onto the actor instead of going into the walls, into everywhere and bouncing off in this mostly white room. Next, we don't need all of that do routine like we had in the wide shot. We can just use the floppy and put on a C-stand and move it as close to our actor as possible while not being in the shot in order to have a little bit more dimension to the closer side of his face. In the wide, we had that beautiful kind of orangey red neon sign in the background, but when you punch in for the close-up, a lot of that light fall off is gone because our subject is way too far from the neon sign for it to have any play on his body. And also because the framing, it's just not in there, but you know it's in there, right? Because you saw it in the wide. So it's good to sweeten up that close-up with a little bit of a kicker light. In this case, it is a mini 20 and I put a red gel on it just with C47s, really simple, but it gives that nice kind of rim halo light behind our subject with the idea of a neon sign without an actual neon sign. Remember, there are these giant windows, right? Supposedly open in the background. So in order to simulate that window light and give a little bit more even exposure across the whole shot, I put another 300D and aimed it directly at the back of Giselle's body and uh, turned it up to only 11%, but that's enough for this particular shot. Last but not least, the lens flare. Here it is, the MX light set on its most tungsten setting, and that is pinging directly into the lens. So now we're gonna sweeten up Giselle's close up. And because his shirt is darker, his skin is darker, his hair is darker, we still want to have a kicker, but a mini 20 is not gonna be powerful enough for us. So I got this 300D, we put on barn doors and a couple of solid yellow gels. These are just party gels that you can insert into barn doors. And if you stack them, they'll give an even more punchy, even more like neon yellow vibe. And that perfectly complements the neon yellow of the sign. I sort of made sure to frame out any of the other elements of the sign and just keep the neon yellow so that you could see that potentially this kicker light is being motivated by the neon sign. For our key light, our main light motivation, now that we're only seeing on this side of the diner, I have closed up all of these windows. We don't need them anymore. It's still giving that vibe as if all the windows are open in the diner, but again, allowing us to control it a little bit better. The fill light is still the same. It is the light dome two on top of the 300D2. We just flipped it over now so that it's a little bit more flattering on Giselle. Last but not least, I realized that there was an area of shadow on the left side of the frame. So I popped on that mini 20, 100% straight at the wall, aimed it there so that it would just brighten that up a little bit and have the scene be more cohesive throughout the entire shot. Just like in the wide and the other over the shoulder, I had the MX light pinged at the lens to give that vintage hazy look, but this time I actually dimmed it down slightly because the backlight on Giselle, that bright yellow, was already really overpowering the warmth of this shot. So I wanted a little bit less warmth and a little bit less intensity on that haze. And I think it worked out quite well. Let's take a look at that scene put together. When shooting a scene, here are some things to keep in mind about maintaining lighting continuity. 
Number one, it's great to take advantage of the existing light in your scene, whether that is coming from a window or a fixture that's already on site. Just remember, if you use it once, you have to use it again and again for every shot. Second, where's your key light motivated from in the scene? If it always comes from one side of the room, make sure that stays consistent throughout your shots. And number three, don't be afraid to go into those close-ups and sweeten them up a little bit. Pop an extra light here, take away light there, make sure that they are perfect because no one's gonna notice. And that is your episode on lighting continuity. The common question this week is, what is the worst continuity mistake you've seen ever? That could be something with lighting, that could be a prop or a piece of wardrobe. Let me know in the comments below for a chance to win an Aperture M9 panel light. My name is V from the A-Team, my social media links are down below, and be sure to subscribe and like this video if you want more Aperture on your feeds and in your life. Until then, happy shooting.